Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk about uh, something that we don't in the Western countries generally talk too much about, and uh, that is the uh, third pole. You know, we all know about the two poles, the Arctic, the Antarctic, but we don't often talk about what we call the third pole, which is the Tibetan Plateau, that region in Asia that is extremely high elevation, home to many of the world's uh, glaciers, you know, alpine glaciers. And this region is changing tremendously. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what's going on there. Um, so we're talking about the Himalayas, you know, the Tibetan Plateau. And um, a number of years ago, in the in one of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports, it was talking about all the glaciers there being gone by 2040 or something, and it kicked up a big stink because it was supposed to be 2140. You know, there was a typo in the um, in the document. So that's the region. Um, that's the region we're, we're focusing on now. And a couple of reports came out very recently. One of them was saying that if we, you know, by some miraculous method, uh, kept the global temperature, average temperature, to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, and they've shifted the pre-industrial baseline, then this region, the uh, third pole, would still lose about a third of its uh, glaciers. There'd be a third of its glaciers would, would vanish. They, they'd just melt out by 2100, you know, if we reach that, that um, pipe dream of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, with a little bit more warming, uh, two degrees warming, it's estimated that half of that ice would be melted out by the end of the century. And within four or five degrees warming, pretty much two thirds of it and greater would be melted out. Now, the reason why this is so crucial is that there's about 240 million people that actually are directly affected. They live they live in this in in these regions, uh, but there's two two billion people. You know, well over a quarter of the world's population between a quarter and a third of the world's population are affected because they use the drinking water from all of the rivers that are fed by melting glacial ice from the third pole, from the Tibetan plateau, that whole high elevation region. So we need to look at this region. We need to look at how climate change is affecting this region. And as expected, it's worse than expected. As I expect, it's you know, it's it's happening. Th these glaciers are going much faster than ex than expected, and there's a phenomenon called elevation dependent warming, which um, hasn't really been looked at significantly. We all know that the Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet. We know about Arctic temperature amplification. Well, we're seeing much faster warming as you go up into higher elevations for most places around the planet. So as you go up to, you know, 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters, 4,000 meters, the actual rate of warming is double or triple what it is at the surface. So not only do we get a temperature amplification as you go closer to the poles, but it appears that you get a temperature amplification as you go up in altitude. So this is very bad news for Antarctica. Think of those high elevation glaciers, that three kilometers of thick ice that is sitting on a kilometer of bedrock, elevating up, you know, very, very high into the, um, into the atmosphere. And we know that the jet streams, we know that the tropopause, the division between the troposphere, where weather occurs and the stratosphere, the upper atmosphere, varies that division point the elevation of that division point varies with latitude so at the equator it's about 17 kilometers and in the arctic it's about and at the poles it's about seven kilometers high so it brings the atmosphere much closer um the the, 
you know, the, the top of the troposphere where weather occurs much closer to the surface. So in this video, I'm going to talk, you know, in, the, in this, you know, in this video and the next few, I'm going to discuss all of these issues. So this elevation dependent warming is a very significant factor. And I'll look at a review paper that came out a few years ago. And it's not quite as simple as Arctic temperature amplification. There's some uh, alpine regions where that effect doesn't seem to be happening. So there's a lot of factors that come into play. We're not sure which ones are actually the key factors. One of them is albedo, you know, just the snow albedo on the mountain. But there's other factors in play with water vapor and things like that. So I'm going to discuss all these things. Um, so let me get back. Let me get to the um, back to my computer screen. So this is a recent blog post where I talked about all the glacier melt, disruption, um, mayhem in the southern hemisphere, land versus water temperatures, a whole mishmash of stuff. Please consider um, supporting my work by setting up a regular donation to PayPal. It can, you can set it up monthly or just, you know, some coffee money, anything helps. Um, all of this, all of these videos that I do, I've done over 500 videos, it is um, to educate you, the public, on the risks and uh, time frames of abrupt climate change. So if you go to my Twitter feed, um, I've, I've put out a lot of tweets recently on, you know, rising temperatures could melt most Himalayan glaciers by 2100. Uh, one third of the ice will be lost due to rising temperatures, etc. So you can find my stuff there if you just follow me at Paul H. Beckwith and also um, my Facebook page. If you specifically put in a friend request and put, you saw one of my videos or something, you know, I go through them and I have way more requests than I can accept because I'm at the, uh, at the limits. But I do have a page which has, you know, it's, this is my page and I do have a, and also another Facebook site that is unlimited um, membership basically. Um, okay, so, Let's look at this New York Times article. Rising temperatures could melt most Himalayan glaciers by 2100. Okay. Uh, so the Himalayas is home to most of the world's tallest mountains. We know Everest is there. And, you know, one third of the region's glaciers will be melted out by the end of the century, even if we meet the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal. In fact, the whole Himalayan region would, would warm on average 1.8 degrees Celsius if the global average was 1.5, but there's many regions at higher altitudes that would, um, uh, that would um, experience much, much faster warming rates, much higher temperatures. So this uh, assessment, the Hindu Kush Himalayan assessment, over 600 page document, which I'll talk about um, I'll talk about some of the highlights or lowlights of it. Um, and of course, you know, this, um, it, under the more dire circumstances, the Himalayas could heat up 4.4 degrees Celsius by century's end. So there'd be radical disruptions to food and water supplies, mass population displacement. Okay, uh, this is a very fragile and hazard prone mountain region. Um, and this report, this is a massive report, like I said, it's over 600 pages, more than 350 researchers and policymakers. This is like the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, if you like, for the, for the, um, the third poll. Um, okay, so it talks about here elevation-dependent warming. Though it is well known that temperature changes due to increased levels of greenhouse gases are amplified at higher latitudes like the Arctic, there's growing evidence that warming rates are also greater at higher elevations. And you'd think that this was very, very well known, but it's not because we don't have a lot of temperature monitoring stations up at high elevations. And for many reasons, we don't have good data at, at high elevation. Okay, so... Um, Basically, so that's this article. Um, here's another one. This is Yale Environment. 
the world's third pole will lose one third of ice by 2100. Okay, um, and these glaciated regions, they, they feed the rivers for nearly two billion people. The rivers originate up in the mountains and they run down all across Asia and they supply, they, they, they support agriculture in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China. And uh, so here we go. So this is the key finding of the report, I guess. Um, if we kept global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, the region would lose one third of its ice by 2100. A temperature rise of two degrees Celsius or 3.6 Fahrenheit would lead to half of the ice being lost and a temperature increase of four to five degrees Celsius which is seven to nine Fahrenheit, would melt two thirds of the region's glaciers. The region has already lost 15% of its ice since the 1970s. Okay, 600 plus page report. Okay, so this is the region we're talking about. Just, if you don't use Google Earth, I highly recommend it. Just go on Google Earth, do a search for the region, and here's where we are here. This is the third pole. The Tibetan Plateau is in this region. Okay, so first of all, uh, before I get into the report, I want to talk a little bit about what normally happens with temperature with elevation. So solar radiation, shortwave solar radiation from the sun comes down and it's absorbed on the Earth's surface and it heats the surface of the Earth. That heat from the Earth's surface then gets transferred to the atmosphere and it heats up the atmosphere. The atmosphere, therefore, is warmest right near the heat source, so it's warmest at the surface. And as you go up, the temperature decreases as you go away from the heat source. We all know that as you climb a mountain, the temperature decreases. Okay, so there's something called the dry adiabatic lapse rate. DAR or DALR, more commonly, I think. Adiabatic means there's no gain or loss of heat. So if you've got a packet of packet an air package or packet and it's rising it's just going into lower and lower pressure area it's expanding it's cooling the cooling rate is for if the air is dry is about one degree celsius per hundred meters okay so you go up a kilometer it drops about 10 degrees celsius this is the dry adiabatic lapse rate okay now if the air is got a lot of water vapor in fact it goes you take it to the extreme where you have it saturated then you have a uh, then then the rate of te it then then because of all that water which which retains heat the air doesn't cool down as much so the the rate of cooling as you go up with atmosphere cools down um, instead of being um, it cools down, it's about half of the rate. And, you know, here it's showing four degrees Celsius rise over, um, o over, uh, okay, so it's about one degree Celsius per hundred meters for the dry, and it's about half, 0.5, in this case, 0.4 for the, um, per hundred meters for the wet adiabatic lapse rate. The actual lapse rate that is experienced in the environment is the environmental lapse rate. Okay, so in this case, it falls somewhere between the one degree Celsius per kilometer and, and uh, five degrees Celsius per kilometer or four degrees Celsius per kilometer, which would be the wet. So it falls somewhere in between. Okay, um, it's about, okay, so this is important. So what, what um, this, so what the elevation dependent warming means is that warming is not the same at all levels of the atmosphere. What we're finding is, is, is as you go up into the mountains, the warming rate is double or triple what the warming rate is at the ground, analogously to the increase of warming amplification with latitude. Okay, so in another video, I'm going to talk about the actual document. Um, here we go, 638 pages. Um, but first, I'm going to talk about elevation-dependent warming. I'm going to do a whole video on elevation-dependent.